Alright, so today I want to talk a little bit more about film photography and specifically about a film SLR camera that has been my gateway into film photography and what I think is a great recommendation for you guys if you are looking for a beginner, cheap, affordable SLR camera to make your way into film photography. And that is the Konica Auto Reflex TC. This is the film camera that I've been using for about the past year or so. And I think it served me pretty well, especially for the price point I got it at. But I want to explain as to why it's such a good entryway film camera. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So the Konica Auto Reflex TC is kind of, in my opinion, a slept on film camera. A lot of people look into buying their first SLR film camera and they go for like something like the Canon AE-1 and other variants of bigger brand, bigger company, bigger names. And those aren't bad, those are probably pretty good cameras as well. But honestly, things like the Canon AE-1, it's getting kind of expensive lately. Like I, just a quick search on eBay gets 200, 300, at least above $150 for a Canon AE-1. And if you're just looking to get into film photography, that's kind of a tough budget price point because it shouldn't be that expensive. More of that money should be going to buying film rolls, testing film, and just developing and scanning film overall. So that's why I think the Konica Auto Reflex TC is such a great camera because it's a very similar camera to the Canon AE-1. So this camera was manufactured in between 1976 to about 1982, I believe it was, while the Canon AE-1 was manufactured on a similar time frame, 1976 to 1984. So these are very similar cameras and they were in the market at a very similar time period. The Konica Auto Reflex TC, however, is made out of a metal frame, but it actually manages to be very lightweight. So if you see me kind of holding it, I don't know, you can only tell so much from someone else holding the camera as opposed to feeling it yourself, but the camera is actually very light but it's made out of a metal construction and then the, the rest is filled in by this kind of like leatherette, as you can see. So as time passes and the camera ages, you'll notice the leatherette kind of pulls in, shrinks a little bit as it's exposed to heat, and you might notice some kind of pulling on the leather body of this camera. It's not too much of a problem. I don't think I've noticed any light leaks from this part specifically, but I just think having the leather is kind of a nice touch. It makes it kind of nice to feel. So my point by this is that it's by no means a cheap camera build quality, despite being such an affordable camera. What's very similar about this camera to the Canon AU-1 are the dials as well. You have your film rewind here, you have your crank right there, I believe this camera has a light meter, but I've never put batteries in it, so you can use it without the light meter. I personally don't really care too much for light meterings, but uh, that's something you can check out as well. What I like about this is that it has a combined shutter speed and ISO dial, so it makes it very simple to change two settings, although you won't be changing ISO too much. That's just pretty much to set the film speed, but the shutter speed is very easy to set, and it can go up to about, I think, one one thousandth of a second or something like that which is honestly more than you really need all right so let's talk about the price point and the availability of this camera because i think that's what pigeonholes it into such a great camera especially for beginner slr film shooters so i picked up this camera for about 40 dollars used which isn't too bad actually i think that's really good this camera is an okay quality condition some of the light seals were kind of messed up and I've been trying to fix them over the months so some of the pictures I'll be showing you guys in this video have a few light leaks but it's not too big of a deal because it's 35 millimeter film I'm not trying to do anything crazy with it but mainly I was buying this camera for the lens itself the lens I have right here is the Konica Hexnon 40 millimeter f 1.8 I've talked about this in other kind of reviews and stuff as well but this is a really, really good lens. It's a pancake lens. So I think that's what makes it really, really nice because of its small compact size, but it's also a very sharp lens. So that's pretty much what I was paying for. It was this lens and the camera kind of came along with it, which is awesome because many of these cameras were sold back in the day. So it's really cheap and affordable. You can find them everywhere for really, really good prices, as opposed to some of the other SLR film cameras that you're gonna have to pay a pretty penny for. So that's another benefit of this camera. It's cheap and it's available and you're getting some good, decent quality. I think the other variant or the other lens that comes with the Konica Auto Reflex TC is the 50 millimeter F1.7, which is supposedly notably a very sharp lens. I've never tried it myself because I was going for the 40 millimeter, but either one of these lenses are apparently really, really good. Another reason why I think this is such an good entryway into film is because if you're anything like me, you've held digital cameras before you've entered the film photography kind of space and being able to adapt vintage lenses to digital photography is really fun as well. So if you're looking for a camera 
like this to step into film, technically you're buying a lens that you can also use in your digital cameras, which is why it's kind of a two in one. You're adding another lens to your digital setup, but you're also getting a film camera to kind of experiment with before you start getting real serious into film photography. And so that's why I really like the 40 millimeter F 1.8 is because it's a pancake lens. So when you're adapting a pancake lens onto kind of a digital setup, then it becomes a little bigger or when you're adapting any lens, it becomes bigger. But because it's a pancake lens, it becomes kind of like a normal lens size. Does that make sense? That's what I wanted to keep a smaller compact size while adapting this vintage lens. And I think it worked out pretty well. And so finally, let's go ahead and talk about image quality because I believe the image quality that comes out of this camera is really good. I think it's surprisingly good for a $40 camera. And if you're looking to get into film photography, you're looking to kind of experience exposing on film, experience the practicing all manual, experiencing light metering if you choose to light meter and all that stuff. And then you can kind of figure out getting more creative with the pictures you are taking and all that stuff. So first of all, it's all figuring out how to use the camera first, which this camera is fairly easy to use. All you have to do is just set the manual focus, take the picture, the viewfinder, is what you shoot through and it's pretty simple. But overall, when it comes to 35 millimeter scans, I was pretty surprised with the image quality I was able to get on some shots for this camera. I've taken this on multiple trips out to the Sequoias, out to Hume Lake, and I think I've gotten a lot of good shots with it. Because particularly sometimes if you're able to use good film, if you're able to afford maybe like a portrait of 400 or 160 roll, that will get you some good results as well, regardless of the camera you use. Obviously, if you have a better camera, it will make things better, but I think as far as just budget entry level SLR cameras, you're not gonna find that big of a difference in between image quality between something like the Konica Auto Reflex TC and the Canon AE-1. So just consideration for getting a different alternative camera because the Canon AE-1s are getting really expensive and everyone wants something like a Canon or an Olympus, but an auto reflex CC, I see no problems with it, you know what I mean? So anyways, that was just some thoughts I had on the camera, how I've been using it, some photo samples. Hopefully it gave you guys some sort of insights on the camera itself and maybe if you're looking for a budget, affordable entryway into SLR film photography, this should be a camera of consideration. I think it's very underrated, especially because there's so many out there, so many affordable versions, and it just seems like they get tossed around like that quickly, you know what I mean? But anyways, we'll be talking more about film on this channel. I've been shooting a lot more film lately, so we're gonna try and do that. But I like film and digital both anyway, so I'll do both. If you like this video, please like the video down below, subscribe to this channel for more photography type stuff. Hopefully I'll see you guys in a future video, and yeah, thanks for watching as always. See you guys later. Peace.